Hey everybody, um, Conscious of Economics and Urban Farm Project, Bridgelyn Dolgoff, hey, anyway, I don't know if you can see my birds way in the back, I actually just had to break down, <clears throat> I've had like a lot of duality stuff, <clears throat> pros and cons, and I decided that I had to feed all my birds um, because the predator birds, they need the uh, these birds to be healthy. <clears throat> birds are good. And Rudolf Steiner talks about, I mean, similar to Native American, you know, a lot of my teachings from Native people, you know, all my relations kind of, you know, insights. But Steiner says that the birds are the ones that deal with the human physical, uh, mental karma. They deal with our mental karma. They sweep it up and pick it up. And it's only when they die does it get kind of dispersed. So I think about how much, you know, mental conflict and mental karma, you know, that I'm producing and I felt the least I could do was take care of my birds because they're doing a heavy job, a really heavy job. I can't even imagine what taking on, you know, mental thought karma <clears throat> for the whole enchilada would be like. I think it's probably the worst, you know, energy out of all the other energies. So I decided that um, that it was, uh, um, uh, that it was going to be more beneficial for me to, um, feed them, not to use them, but to treat them better because they're living off, you know, wild seed and, you know, number one, they can't get to it to forage right now. And a lot of them probably haven't really dealt with this kind of snow in this area for a really, really long time. So they may generationally no longer carry the memory <clears throat> of how to deal with this kind of environment, right? Because it's probably been, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 generations of birds out here since they've had like snow like this. So anyway, I bought the best possible seed that I could give them. And though I couldn't find any without corn, which didn't really want to feed them corn, but um, they're starting to fatten up a little bit. They were pretty thin. The quail looked awful. And so they're a lot happier. So you can see them back there in the back. <clears throat> and... Um, I feel good about feeding them, but as soon as the snow melts off, I won't feed them. I'll let them forage again, um, but I think that it's good. I also put out a pan of water out there, so um, I change it out and fill it up, try to every day, so they have fresh water. <clears throat> Not a lot of fresh water out here, and also I had a bee and a yellow jacket that this was a couple of days ago before this big storm. But, um, yeah, so, um, anyway, a lot going on. So I kind of want to talk about, you know, like duality, kind of in a way that people can understand. We could call it the polarity, the duality, the other. Um, pros and cons. And... Um, and so I was sitting here thinking, I have, like, because I'm on this property and I'm kind of taking care of it and cleaning it up, and I don't think that there has been a lot of snow here for a long time, so, you know, the building is out of sort. <clears throat> so I've been battling leaks, which, you know, I, I haven't fixed, but I'm actually able to use some of the things that I've collected over the summer um, to detour detour and also um you know um deroute 
the water and stuff. I've got about 10 inches on the roof right now. And so I've just got to get up there today. I have somebody coming to help me, which is a good thing. Otherwise, I do it all by myself. <laughs> I think I shock people, you know. Anyway, I'm being called the Pioneer Woman. So that's my, my new nickname. <laughs> I want to be medicine, you know, Pioneer Medicine Woman, you know. But I guess I'm working up to that. So anyway, um... I was sitting here thinking about, you know, having a conversation with with the universe. And we were talking about, you know, how well do you like, you know, this experiment now when you have these leaks on the roof and like the property is like a constant battle. <clears throat> and um and a seasonal kind of battle. I mean, you know, I'm taking the stuff on head on um and learning a lot about managing my own, you know, physical, the buildings and stuff like that, and just other stuff. Um, and so there was like a conversation about that, kind of from the universe asking me questions about, you know, how I like this experiment, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, my mind drifts, instead of answering it, my mind drifts off into this, like, left hemisphere kind of place of, um, well, you know, it could be different, you know, like if I had a partner who was also skilled and, and it would be better if, you know, it hadn't snowed, it would be, like, different. And, you know, all of these different kinds of thoughts. And so this duality you know, here we go, mind karma, and the duality, the projection of duality that is not in the present moment, and what is, so how the right, the left hemisphere just wants to delineate, I guess, a way, you know, um, out of balance with the feeling, you know, part, it would be better if it would be different if, you know, and, um, and then, you know, like there was another conversation, you know, that was added into my head from the universe. Like what if you had the experience where, um, you know, you were sitting around and, and, you know, you were like at a resort and it was warm hot springs weather and you're getting like massages and raw food diet and, and, you know, so I had this vision, you know, in my head and, and, you know, would I like that lifestyle better than the one that I'm having? And, and, you know, I thought, yeah, it'd be great, like for vacation, but I really feel like I'm a physical kind of person, you know? And then I thought, well, you know what? I've never tried that. I've never gone to a, like a resort for 30 days and, and, you know, um, health resort. <clears throat> so then I thought, well, you know what, I, I really can't judge because, you know, I really not had that experience. So here I am coming back into balance out of the duality. And then coming into a place of, you know, how about we just participate and experience in the now, what's here, what's on it, what's in front of us, what's factual, and not sending my spirit, you know, um, Carolyn Meese talked about this, about calling your spirit back from the places that you send it, which I think is the duality, you know, it could, would, should be different. Would it be different? And, you know, that whole mental escaping, um, what the facts are you know, and dealing with that emotionally and getting a fire lit under your ass and just get it, get it done. Take care of it, you know, um, and breathe and feel, you know, as you're, as you're going through it. <laughs> See that little bird out there? It's all fluffed up. Oh, it's cold. Anyway, I'm appreciating my little birds. I have this little, you know, bird hedge that I'm building a fire pile. <clears throat> and so they come here and they sit on it. So it's kind of nice to look at them. 
And um, they are happy as all hell because I fed them before I did the call. So they are hungry and starving and really kind of dependent right now on me to make a difference in their lives. And like I said, I'm helping them because uh, what was balance out of duality was taking care of those that take care of me. And that's so that's what I'm doing. I'm taking care of them because they're taking care of me and my mental duality karma, you know, that I shift back and forth with versus what is and what could be or what should be um, or what would be, right? Which is all like hopium and hypothetical and... Um, and maybe the things that we're even like, you know, looking at on that duality, we've never even experienced. We don't really have an actual clear um, ability to critical think about <clears throat> the situation. But sometimes it's anything but here, you know, as the battle continues. But, you know, I look at this property a lot and the gratitude I feel towards it because I have needed to battle against, you know, just uh, some stuff that I've been let go of, you know, my mind, I just want to fine tune, you know, like turning the volume knob up, tuning it up and making it run stronger with, you know, higher vibration and emotionally dealing with a lot of stuff that and I still have some like rage, you know, backed behind because of so many things that, you know, like have happened. So gives me a chance to work, physically work off a lot of those kinds of energies. And that's why I love farming and I miss farming. <clears throat> but I have a substitute, you know, this place. So pretty soon, mid-month, I will be here a year, still cleaning it up, <laughs> still sorting out the problems, just they're seasonal. Um, got half of the, you know, maple tree there pruned. She's looking so much better, um, but there was a lot of wood that came off of her. And have a few more things within my wheelhouse, you know, that I can manage and take care of, and so... Um, yeah, I mean, you know, this land, this property gave me the opportunity to heal some old deep wounds and also, you know, how I'm playing mental games, you know, with duality. So I spend a lot of time in what is not fact, what is not present, what is not in the now and really being able to bring that back into balance. All right, everybody. Um, we're almost out of the deep end of the pool. Mars is almost done. And, you know, Mercury retrograde, like all kinds of stuff. So hang in there. 16th, 17th, I think we'll be out of the deep end. But it's uh, we've been swimming the deep end since May. And so it'll be nice just to be on the, on the shallow. We might not be out of the pool, but at least we'll be in the shallow end, right? Come 16th and 17th. So stay focused, stay in the now, stay present, feel how you feel. Um, and, uh, you know, hold your ground against the duality because it's everywhere. The duality is everywhere. So, all right, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Have a great day.